Hello, welcome to the Gustily Podcast. On this beautiful Sunday, I'll be reviewing West Review. We'll have the AW Full Gear Review as well. And so uh, Rampage Review as well. There's plenty more reviews coming to port. So let's get started. Let's get started with... Let's start with Raw. Yeah. Alright. Let's talk about this week's Raw. So Raw is still... WWE is still working towards Survivor Series on November 25th. This week's show had plenty to keep fans occupied till then. Jay Uso and Cody Rhodes were looking to regain the tag titles when they took on Finn Balor, Damian Priest of the Judgment Day. We also saw Ivar vs. Miz, Otis vs. Sick Nakamura, Tegan Knox vs. Pepper Niven. Okay, let's take a look at this week. Dominic Mysterio and Jamie McDuggett vs. Rollins and Zayn. We got some video recap of some of the recent events surrounding the world title. Cody made his way to the ring saying he and Jay Uso were going to regain, regain the tag title before talking about War Games introducing his team. Rhodes and Seth Rollins had a little confrontation in the ring before Jeremy Day interrupted the trade usual insults while the group implying the American Nightmare and his team would never be able to get along. Rollins yelled at everyone for talking too much, challenged Jay and McDougat and Dominic to face him and Zayn which made official during the break. We had a pretty standard tag match for the story being told. Neither of the dudes work as a team regularly. Both pairs some pairs show some decent chemistry. Zane Rollins did a great job giving the crowd plenty of moments to cheer. Dug it and Mysterio saw all the offense as well. The match won't matter in the grand scene of things, but it gave the fans a chance to see a couple of WWE top names do what do best. The, the open segment, the match took up a combined 35 minutes top of the show. It looked like Rollins about to win. Ripley arrived with Balor, Priest, the Kyle, the DQ. Jay Uso, Rhodes, Joe turned a huge brawl. Pierce flipped out, said everyone who's in the tag title about later shows bad for your arena. Zayn, Rollins defeated Dominic Stewart, taking dug in by DQ. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we had a young child in front row, had a stuffed dog like a Cody's pet, Pharrell, Pharrell. He stopped, took a moment to acknowledge it with her. So, D- McDougan's the only person who didn't get to speak during the open segment. So, the Judgment Day breakup is coming. The way Val looked at Priest when he claimed to be the leader of the group said it all. So, yeah. So, Doc's use of the pedigree to counter was kind of creative in my book. We got Otis versus Shisuke Nakamura. So, we see Ripley still yelling at Pierce. She ended up having a brief moment with Story Stark, all turning into a fight with Andrew and Mommy, Mammy retreating. So last week Nakamura picked a win, pick up a win over Zawa. That's this week he had a chance to face of one of Tazawa's Alpha Academy allies, Otis. The powerhouse took control early, dished out a lot of punishment. He, he even one of did one of Nakamura's own moves when he stepped down in the corner of the rope. Feeling it took some time for the artist to get the upper hand. Otis was in control of the majority of the bout, even counted Kitasha once. It took three Kitashas to play put him down for the three count. This match was mostly one side and made Otis look like a beast. Judging how to end it, it looked like Gable will likely have a contest with Otis soon. Even though this was the most perfect, excellent performance, they did a good job making both men look strong. Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Otis. So the video package for Nakamura was awesome. It finally feels like WWE finally knows how to present him as a heel. So it's hard to believe Otis gave up in line for three years. Otis could have been a great run in Japan. Size allows him to to fit right in. We got Paper Ni- Piper Niven for Tiga Knox. WWE aired a special video pack of Knox for Niven. Nev- she and Niven had the match. Talent was a ring time with Knox men- men's. They were likely the next team to challenge for the women's tag belts. This was their powerhouse for underdog kind of contest. Niven did a good job dominating Knox while Chelsea Green yelled encouragement instructions from the ringside. Natalia Green ended up getting to fight at ringside, almost caught Niven in the match. She managed to get her foot on the bottom rope to prevent the pin. Knox pinned her with a crucifix moment later anyway. This bout was uneventful. The crowd being so uh, quite unhelped, taking Knox to be a Piper Niven. So, Wade Berry gave the Papa Shango reference on commentary. So, we go to Tommy Champ, Tommaso Champa versus Ludwig Kaiser. Organo accompanied Champa to the ring for his match against the pairing of Ludwig Kaiser, who had Jai Vai advanced by his side. 
Vincent failed, tried to fail the bait Chompa to follow him sneak attack about the bow. Chompa either took control or slammed Kaiser's head into the announce table. Once Kaiser took control, he slowed the pace down so he could dish out precise offense. Vincent was ejected from ringside. The ref caught him cheating right before a commercial break. Two men had a money match over the years. They know each other well. They use their chemistry to deliver their performance and highlights their strengths. You know, Vincent was ejected. He showed back up to hit Gargano with a running kick. The distraction allowed Kaiser to roll up Chompa up for the win. The ending was a kick bit contrived. The match had a bit, oh, it was a slumped. Kaiser defeated Chompa. So, yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It may be a simple move, but in parents, Mr. A plus everything has the clothesline, put every extra on it, make it a little painful. So we got Xia Lee versus Indy Hartwell. The match came after Xia Lee defeated Kaiser for right two weeks ago. She don't check out Becky Lynch for last week's Battle Royal, but not allowed to complete as a result, compete as a result. Indy Hartwell took control early, but as soon as they rolled to the ring, Lee showed went into the ring staff take it over. Re- Lee Ray did her best to hype the fans at ringside. Seeing most of the people at arena didn't care about this match and had a big impact on overall presentation. <sighs> a quiet crack can destroy the momentum of a bout. It didn't any way seem to help. The referee came to call to end after Claire Hartwell could no longer compete after taking a kick to the head. This contest was short, did a little to make either women look good. Becky Lynch showed her end looking for revenge, helped, but this segment fell flat. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, then next, um, it was what's next? Uh, the Miz versus Ivar. Last week's Fatal Four Way number contender ended with Miz entering the shot in her Connell title, but the way it was supposed to end was Ivar and Ailis to get the pin at the same time. Ivar tapped the Miz after it was over, set them up for the bout, which is likely bidding for the title shot. Had last week's end bout, and then as attended, Miz get a, did a good job playing the underdog against a larger opponent. When he works as a bay face, incorporates moves, doesn't usually get get little pops from the crowd. Bronson and Reed came out and have a closer look as they got into an arguing with Ar- Ivar early in the show. This was another match that made sense from a Starline perspective, but did little to excite the fans at first. The bay, the Miz working as a bay face is going to take some time to get used to, so he's in universally positive reactions yet. The action between the ropes was solid. The crowd was getting more into the match as it progressed. The Miz ended up getting the win by using the ropes of leverage. Read tech Ivar then was over hit the Tsami. So yeah. So we go to the main event Balor and Priest versus Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso for the AEW ta- I mean WWE Tag Team Champions. The main event of the show was a little tag team bout with Balor and Priest defending the tag titles against Uso and Rhodes. The company gave about final 30 minutes of the show, but the entrance included they had plenty of time to share highlight. Uso and Balor stealing for their team with Furious Lockup. The Irishman scored the first touchdown, but James Ryan back beat this little into a brawl for four competitors. With this quartet, there's almost a foregone conclusion the match will be good. They were all veterans with a dozen talent across multiple promotions, so the main event was at safe hands. The only downside was the outcome was predictable, but how we got there might have been surprised some. McIntyre showed up, hit Uso at Claymore kick while we're for Strat to give Jumpman Day easy path to victory. Jumpman Day defeated Uso Rose, retaining the tag belts. So the announcers kept voice saying how many people you on each war game scene. Usually five. Feel like WWE might go with four this year. We got Sam Irving went in front of the pre match announcements. So Ripley told Priest he was the leader of the team for the war games. Please still think it's an overall rule of the stable. Priest gave Jughead a jacket to push Jughead to the judgment day before the match. Uh, yeah. Here's my word for this week's Raw. This week's Raw was strong. It was a strong episode, but it did a good job of building up most feuds that, that will make it up to the Survivor Series card. So it was nice seeing many women different and women getting spotlighted throughout the Monday night. Even those women actually given time speaking in a ring or basic backstage segments. The best match of the show was the main event, but the opening time about Carter Trump up for enjoyable too. We were very interested in set belts. The possibilities were set up while the show included McIntyre, the under the day for service as a potential otherwise be showdown. War games is always a fun step for WWE, so this year's surprise should be memorable and a few surprises. So, 
This is this week's Raw. Now let's talk about the, the car for NXT, this week's NXT. And then we'll review NXT. So, for tonight's NXT, we got the tag titles. Chase and, and his partner versus Tony DeAndre and Stax. We got Wesley versus Baron Corbin. Roxanne versus Lash Legend. Trish, Trick Williams versus Joe Coffey. We also got the Supernova Sessions with the Metaphor, Donar, Balvin Gable, Otis, Max and Dupree, Akira Nazawa. So yeah, we're gonna get some of that. So let's go straight to NXT. Let's go to NXT. Uh, okay. Alright, this week's NXT. Um, NXT. Okay, remember this week of support. This week's NXT. Chase U highlighted an important night on the brand, including Iron Survivor Man qualifiers, Wesley return match. Chase, Chase, and Hudson defeated the defended the tag team belts for the first time. Your former champion D'Angelo and Stax to shout out the job for for, 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 for themselves as title holders. Falling to Tiffany Stratton and Guy Jack qualified last week. When his name Perez but he's last legend. While Triple and Battle Joe Coffey Iron Fiber qualifiers. Um his own drama kind of has been both on the talents for right. Carmen hoped to ruin Lee's returning seed. No one died by its iconic supernova session with the car Morrison between Orange and Chad Gable. <coughs> Lyra and Zyli met a loyalty ceremony. Show continued AC push for deadline final big event in 2023. Start NXT champions Chase U versus the family. Controversy over cheating. Strat to Andrea. Chase about the challenge test contest. Duke Hudson called him protecting so long for Chase Ball to the bada bing bada boom. It's a shame that the brand's already moving around Chase U as the NXT tag champs. The hot tail of nature of the town is not so healthy. Solidified division of field slightly uneven. <coughs> the story was clear it protects Chase U in the loss. The wrestler feeds up fans when they find it turn against them. This is Tony Angela saying stakes when it's a focus on Chase as a weak link. It was a five match far from a two team deliver at Halloween Havoc. The story based the focus to the point that the family win almost felt overshadowed. Hopefully the payoff is both Tuesday to flame contest. So family to fear Chase U. So Chase advised his copyright the ongoing investigation on Chase U commentary Joseph Joseph saying was worse than the big hammer Michigan situation. Uh, okay, Chase U section did not support the first throughout the match. Remember slowly walked down the contest. Hudson said to a double team. Jason Jane seemed Jane was just struck by Chase U lost stood with others in the ring after his support. Backstage family laid out one to the tag division with new women speaking for them promising a new celebration next week. So the reporters how the chase of Jane picked up a car for her. Ch- Chad Gable challenges no dart. Ra- Roxanne Perez was la- last legend. Alpha Academy Trick Dorm on uh, Nova Sessions in the Green Heritage Cup match next week with Chad Gable. Last Legend used her strength to control Robert Perez, but the project had a counter or opponent back from offense. However, Kind James called the arm Perez in the corner so to take the boot and powerbomb from the loss. Metaphor for Alpha Academy is a wonderful dynamic. The stables had a compatible human that had a crowd coffee route. Gable vs. Dar is going to be the most be grappling next week. Legend has approved since a rebrand metaphor, but she's ready for the Iron Survivor Challenge. That's uncertain. The match with Perez was okay at best. So, yeah. Losing Perez by Iron Survivor could have been effective quality. It was going to be a surprise competitor in the match. Battle and Halo would have been more interesting. Legend defeated Perez by pinfall to qualify for the Iron Survivor Challenge. So, yeah. Dar has Iron Survivor Cup chained up to protect it. Otis flirted with Legend, but it was not propagated. The referee threw a metaphor on the ringside for the match, leaving Legend to fight fair. Jared Jackson returned to strap the official late. So we go to Iron Survivor qualifier Trick Williams versus Joe Coffey. 
took one and took out a physical fight with Joe Coffey or anything where it's blast out send off and got a suplex. Carmelo Hayes no health sign on John Gallows, but Trick so caught Joe with a maybe knee for the win. This was a fine bout. A near miss showed his best. Joe was in control of most of the contest. Trick was always going to win. As he advanced the sword, Melo and Trick went out early in the match before, so I formed a chance after each other. He had because his right and stick in hand for now. Like, <sighs> Gallus looked completely out of sight. I see my credible again to leave in the brand name to the weight ranks to Europe. Um, Trick defeated Joe by pinfall to qualify the Iron Survivor Challenge. So, a notable moment before the match, Trick Melo promised they were on the same page. They were saying that Booker told Joe he was soon bearing for gimmick infringement. Trick knocked out Mark. Some of that. He had a moment in the segment of love. Back over Pooh's and Trick TV. Riley had to head of their match. Leave found no mercy. Production first was impressive, but acting wasn't in my book. Then we go to Brawling Bruce vs. OTM. Bronco, Bronco and Nima, Lucy and Price dominated Butch and Early and Slam into a rich hole and got the huge tag. The Bruiser would wipe out scripts and Nima got her ring inside. Woonsaw hit up. Nation finish of the hole and to seal the win. Uh, the best match tonight at this point, Bond, Brutes, and LTS on chemistry. This time, could something come down the line? But now, well, Butch and Hall are working on a big stage in LTM. Yeah. The Enterprise has some serious potential hard hitting tag team, but we'll need more time to pull all together. The broad group remain anxious and long, it should continue to deliver quality performances. So, LTM powered on the side by Beats of Baran. So, we got that. In that. Put Slam Tom Holland. Joe Gates cut a promo on the Pro Center Blue Port during the camera. We got G.D. Dolan versus Lorraine Grace. Grace controlled the action, but got into arguing with Referee Raw Time. Down Dolan hit the G.D. Diner with the win. Dolan Grace tried hard, didn't land. Newcomer Hardy looked like a serious match from the former NXT Women Tag Champ. Decided to get more offense. So, right move with a retro and get the win. So, after lightly iron survivor qualifier soon. Grace and Strong Promise and one of better characters in the division already, but not ready for a premium live event. Dolan defeated Grace. Mm-hmm. Defeated. Okay. So we got Joe and Chance James for action threat, only to be interrupted by Grace Cole and Educated. Grace and Hansel went backslide. Great. We actually showed a vision on Wong Wagner and Joe's Stone Journey. Stone, the Stone, the two, the two agreed to to dinner at Stone's place. So we go to Journey. Eddie Thorpe explained he had healed up from a strap match from Ijack when I joined the Iron Side of Challenge. Charlie Dempsey challenged him. We go to Baron Corman versus Wesley. Wesley returned with return, but Dominic Smith said Baron Corman didn't matter. We got two posts on during Don Wong at the end of the day. Corman talked to him about the attack on Lee. John Nagel up alive to make the save. Mag Dragon to use the Torpedo Mask of Ryan at the end of the day. The former Lone Wolf stood tall. Dragon Arts announced that face Corbin deadline. Then that feel like a main event as usual color while Corbin saw the gold brand. There were no heat just stacks for this match with me. This was the best round of the night. They're saying more about the rest of the card. The Lone Wolf should be a capable challenge for Dragon Arts in order to can reach heights of Mad Dragon vs. Conrad O'Hay trilogy. The Iron Sovereign Challenge like the Outshot in the XC Championship match. The Latina Bill rematch with Dirty Dawn, but Phil needs to heat up coming weeks to be cited. So Corbin and Lee, Corbin defeated Lee. Corbin and Dirty Dawn found common ground backstage. Lee, backstage, Lee and Dragon hashed out the past differences. Lexus King wishes Corbin luck for the main event. Former Old Wolf caught Lee jumping the rain, playing the six seed dead floor. That was the, that was the moment. Um, overall, this week, this this week NXT, Frank, this is off week of NXT, has set up some big championship matches to show what left without any real spark. The best bout was Corbin versus Lee, near to deliver more to Esther than offense. Chase U versus the family was was let down due to the result and all the drama on showing the action. Um, um, okay. Shows like this should bring more treat or big events to come. This deadline shaping mixed bag comes December 9. The men's iron summer challenge shaped by big names. The women's is gonna be trust want to trust less to compete in a huge amount for the first important KXD contest. I have back her look like to beat Nazo next week. Lee left without charm for deadline, but Dagonoff already has match set. Tag division with turmoil like the Sunnera multi-tag belt with NXT tag titles. 
Uh, but overall, NXT has some work to do to get back on track. Valkyrie versus Lee, then Darn versus Chad Gable next week, starting to get better. So let's go straight to Dynamite now. Before we go to Dynamite review, let's get some wrestling news. We got some wrestling news today. Let's get to it. It's unusual, but the last review we're gonna be because the reason we're gonna do wrestling news later on because later at the end we're gonna do a AW8. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do a pay per view review for this week's episode, Full Gear. So yeah, get wait for that. It's that's coming after after Collision. So let's start with some wrestling news. Yeah. Chris Hero believes Darby Allen's crossover appeal is incredible. Chris Hero gives his thoughts on AEW star Darby Allen. Allen cements off AEW's hard young star, reigns team champion. Everyone knows that Nakal Kim, who worked at Backstage AEW producer. He spoke about AEW's crossover appeal during a recent interview on the, on the Ringer's Mass Man show. He says this. He says that. We're getting a wrestling bubble. What we see was front of our face when we reference when we remember what we remember historically. It's easier for wrestling. The cynical is not always belt to belt. The promos is larger and way to look out of the and see those kids with a face pain like him. These are five, six, seven year old children going to grow up. Lies is kind of the people on gamer level. Later in the chat, Hero reminds listeners that Alan consists of hanging out with larger than light at figures like Oli Hawk or Ab- at JFP. Knowing that Alan's crossover will get bigger over time. So he talks about like Darby wrestling fans like it's Darby we're gonna see some crazy great creative to do this give it Tim Robinson but him like Tony Hawk and stuff. Darby has a crossover is incredible like so he's still made these things that Darby likes interesting you see like you wonder what dude's about he did natural circus now you have a pro wrestling it's about about a five fact we all see meets in the world people like Darby when he crosses on different areas of entertainment so it's the business as a whole that's not rain it's a false finish some wrestlers are bigger than that. I think Darby's one of them. So yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. This week, this week, like this Saturday full gear, I will review. Like it'll be coming up after Collision, but yeah, he is a main star. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the main star, mm-hmm. main star. All right, we go straight to the WWE and and their settlement lawsuit with Penny, following a contract dispute. So back in October, there was news that came out. WWE Patty were in the legal battle, trade a great carpet ship and big NXT, like something like that. WWE terminated the deal Panty, but Panty filed a lawsuit against WWE. Saying that the partnership was terminated with no warning whatsoever. WWE revealed, revealed that Fantax was a new partner for trading cards. Well, it appears that WWE Panty had reached a settlement to notify the court early to the documents. Can you can read those below? Mm-hmm. Pursuit to the court order. Parties compare like the current live real time provincial resolution. Uh huh. Current Zoom 30 minutes. There was a lot of exchangements, deals, and stuff. So, so it was handled. The agreement was handled. So, yeah. The lawsuit was settled. Everything goes on. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. The lawsuit was settled. Penny and the WWE, WWE's lawsuit was settled. So, let's go straight to another. One of the third news for the for the week of podcasts will have reveal who came up with his powerhouse moniker. During during the recent episode of Chill with Ice podcast, I'm gonna say this: Will Hobbs revealed his new unique min- moniker was actually the child owner and Tony Khan. I mean, you know, Tony Khan. Say that river, I guess. Sorry. He said when he was out of public, spotted by wrestling fans, they usually would call him. The powerhouse name came from my owner, CEO Tony Khan. He's a big Hackshaw Butch Reed fan. He's like a band like Powerhouse. I like I did get stuck, so I walk through the airport or walk around. I'm here at Hobbs or Powerhouse Hobbs. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how the Powerhouse Hobbs name came. It was from Tony Khan. So anyone who I don't know something. So yeah, that was his name, Powerhouse Hobbs. So yeah, let's now since all the wrestling news are out, let's go straight to the dynamite review. Alright, let's go to Dynamite. Let's do the show. Okay. Um sorry. Mm. Alright, this week's Dynamite. Okay. It's four days before annual present AW presents November Zag Phone Gear. The company rolled into Harry Notario, California for the Go Home episode Dynamite. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, one more thing. It's the front of my hey friend. Hey Olivia. Yeah, 
All right, four, all right, we're done here. Let's go to the broadcast to speak. Jeff in a high stakes match in women's a women's division. Previous Saturday's international championship between Cassie and Moxley. A momental strength street fight that serves the latest battle to go Kenya Mega Don Callis fan. Let's see what down this week this week on this week on Dynamite. Let's see what happened this week. All right, let's talk about the match cars already. Free fight, Jericho, Mega, Bushi, White versus Don Cal's family. Iron Cassie and Hook versus Moxley, Yuda. But the Bucks versus Penta, Zeta, and Commander. Red Velvet versus Sky Blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, the, advan- the winner will advance to full gear Saturday. So, yeah. And, and then JF promo. Let's start with... John Moxley and Yuta you know, versus Arn Cassie Hook. The international champion Clusty defending against Moxley at full gear, but Fresh squeezes part of Hook. A little time so I mentioned for you know, world champion partner. We are you have a hopper room and show. Give it a, ma- a competitive matchup. Cool. Uh, uh, only at a ring so You got a hook about him for the win. Mm-hmm. After Red Moxley suggests Cassie is shaken, though he will win the international championship Saturday night. The finish was smart, preserving Cassie and Moxley while highlighting the intensity of rivalry between the two. It also put Yuta over as potential challenger Hook's FTW championship, who's only a Saturday soon night is, 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 is trying to constitute fit. This was a solid way to kick out night, the night show. Oh, you have to fear Hook and Cassie. <laughs> As the hook took a fight to that back with Comet at clubs, Tottenham and her, uh, you know, you know, again, Cassie Hook took the fight to the black below Comet Club opponent, showing this need to hang with Moxie Yuta. On the night that is a street fight, same night as a street fight, both for the main event, made the water down right in the game by booking a brawl to start the show. You got a hook daddy on Moxley on Friday World Farm World Champ with an touch. And it's aura of the Fed. Hands aura of the FTW Championship. You get a You get a penny hook was not really a big deal. Should have been layer very rare losses. Should have been meant a lot more. You got a hangman head for flicking face to face. Hammy Page face to face promo was for Strickland with men and more bit of bit to the Texas death match with Nazi fire up men for the former watch attack short dress table at week. We remember Burge from Page Page who we know were by heel just a beat down on Page on Prince Nana. It was a second page looked to sound like passionate hangman that fans fell in love with built any I did a man back to lead the first place in the first in the build in the first place. Strickland had one last hammer to point home, put Vage on uh, blast while elevated punch and gone long way and shredded that match. Paid on full gear gear car. This is where the quotes are involved. And the takeaways. Um you're dumber, you you two years ago when you're done, you got fast, got fired. Page came out firing on the mic. Had a line about his fancy leading him with fired up struggling to eat more. Full at full gear on your jaw and your journey and your shaking share page one is at pay per view opponent. Page reiterates the stipulation from that segment reminding strictly he did not con- miss and did not include Prince Nana or laying the manager out of barrage on right hands. Red Velvet versus Sky Blue. Sky Blue cash your tickets full gear and a shot and TBS champion victory over Red Velvet hard fought match. The actual team blue and velvet saw the match for so call in your fall. Run over blue spent weeks tangling a heart rivalry with heart while mounting just her friendship with T B Chan Stantler. She has approved bench that wrestling has opportunity to show off on the full year stage. The question is where she has a realistic Leon Terra Chan is she didn't really take the pin for the woman that blue defeated Velvet. Blue skill blue scooby the gear among the best in the business. Tony Khan Crave team has to come up with a way to rebuild Velvet just because just during the mix is not working in my book. 
two big kickouts in this one. Each kick out during sinister stuff. Yeah. Samoa Joe squashes John Cruz. Samoa Joe hit the ring by John Cruz. Ring as well, well as you imagine. John Cruz squashed the opponent, tapping out to kill a clutch. After the match, Joe again offered to be MJF tag partner at full gear against the guns. And at one way or he's inventable. This is a fine enough, but not necessary at all. It could have been a backstage vision, and you know, it ate some time, though, and created two guys when MJF would take up Joe. i would partner with him. So there's that. Samoa Joe defeated Cruz. Backstage moments. Backstage when her maid met Tony Storm for the first time. The time was someone essentially dismantled her. It's true before ordering her butler Luther to get her warm up match booked for Friday this week. Peta Zero Commander Rich the Bucks. The young Bucks continue their, jour- their journey down to Hayden number as a night to feed Penta Commander by various means, airing jeers from their hometown fans. The match feared featured a ton of acts, so I actually drawn it to this awesome chance despite their little way of in Matt Naruto and lack of selling. Spoke Cummings, the match accomplishment attended with the Bucks firmly established on the villains by pair of low blows, a mocking Jews effect, and a BT true trigger to Commander for the win. Hill Bucks are the best Bucks given how things were trending audience and hey, we thought it was probably a wise creative move when it meant for full gear in a match with Chris Jarrow, Kenny Omega's question that will hover over the match Saturday night. So yeah, here's my take. The hard, the entire opening sequence as all this was ridiculous. And North Sway, all this mess that led to set down the doubles kip up, cup the street super kicks the bucks. All of it made no sense. Started following the mat. Next time it shows the cool bad guys. How was no mention of long rich history between Pence and the Bucks in the match? They literally kicked off AW one of the marquee matches back at, back at double or not to 2019. Two low blows by Nick, a due to the fact that B trigger allowed the Bucks to score the tainted victory. To me, it was tainted. The gun sent a message to NJ. Yeah. Ahead of Saturday, full of gears by in where they challenged in the mystery, mystery part for Irish World Tag Team Championship. The guns hit a ring for the matter of Peter Avalon. An untamed partner, aim partner. They won a short order with Reed Tati Yuma. Then caught a brief. Got a pull on that caught upcoming opponent. No purpose undermines the guns on Saturday night. It's accomplished nothing, fast nothing, did ain't did nothing to make anyone see a match we do or do not want. The guns defeat Avon and his partner. Then they take away backstage a tense confrontation between the Bucks, Kane and Megan Jericho, and with a pull apart scruffle. We go to a street fight. The man who raced his name is like a special Sponsor street fight. The rivalry between Jericho and K and Megan Don Cal's family continued Wednesday night. A special second sponsor, like a dragon street fight, pitting the Golden Jets, Kobe Belshi, Paul White against Takashi, Takashi Fletcher, Powers Hobbs, and Mission Brian Cage. A wild chaos match is through the body splattered. Batter bloody lead to a finish that saw Mega Jericho duct tape Hobbs or ropes for forward the little one named Angel to Cage for the win. This was our writer's name per se, but that should not be discussed. The efforts of competitors and fans who ate it all up. The match, whatever it was, delivered was promised. Did beg the question was next for the Don Callis family. To me, this was another big loss in the same week that Jericho defeated Kush to Takashi in the DDT Pro Ring. What credibility does his story care to get her faction had this point? Yeah, Mega Jericho White Bush defeated the four Callis's. Those big show child's chest will never give it. say Hobbs recovered nicely. He slammed Paul White on the top of the car in the parking lot. So that was a me- mission accomplished for the put over Hobbs. A mega hit Fletcher with a bottle and cut his hand pretty badly to the point the nurse said throughout the mess of the match. That too so Fletcher to Ibushi threw a sign and several chairs at the ringside was a cringe worthy and near possible to match a scenario an area when it did not hurt like hell for everyone involved. The NJ had promo. A fired up NJ at Wayne's Raid to the ring. Amelia apologized for the claim and uncalled for getting him calling a crosshair as an NJ experience. And Pashi talked about full gear to feed Jay White to retain his AEW World Champion. The switchblade erupted his system. NJ was the devil, claimed the champ was no no hero. At the vine, the BMF full gear. White sliced the guns, robbed Juice Robinson on him, then laid him out with a blade rudder. Before it's an all bullet club teammates. To close the show. A re- and in front of the closer show did not advance anything. Rather, establish an issue between two built heat from the heels by where the cowardly foreign one beat down the champ. Yeah, 
uh, take away. Bite all ripe and strain and of the devil. Bite the raiders, shifting a man under the mask. And they're about to watch our friends. And the guns obviously make them look like lackeys for the most part. As I go home, show for full gear. This is not particularly great effort. Less than half of the paper we were representing nothing but really advanced in ring work. Bored, being mad, mostly good, but let them on. Take each match, a segment eventually that were mostly good. A show should be designed, convinced fans to purchase AO full gear this Saturday night on uh, BR. This show did not have quite much as the company should have hoped for, in my opinion. But yeah, bad go home show for AEW Dynamite. So next, it goes straight to ROH review. Then after that, we'll be having, let's see, after that, we'll be having a SmackDown, SmackDown, SmackDown a special Friday Night Collision, Rampage reviews. And then we ended all Sunday with, we, then the ends on this, this week, and the final will be a full gear review. So, Let's let's all right then since we're all at let's go straight to Ring of Honor. All right, as I promise the ROH re- review. Let's get to ROH now. All right, mm, all right. Uh, shit. Okay, let's start ROH this week. The show was headlined by Kingston defending the ROH World Champ against former champ Don Castle. Here's this week's episode of ROH Donna Club. <laughs> okay. Temperata with inter- international champion, Castle ch- champion. Defeated Peter Avalon, Castle. Donna, after that match, Don Castle interviewed by backstage by Lexi Nair. He said that the interview was very calmly and said that he had been watching Eddie Kings for over 15 years and so he's a bit heavy-footed. Castle said Eddie Kingston's only chance of winning was knocking him out. He left to eat some cheese. There you go, the Outrunners defeating Sebastian Wolf and Jacob Watts. Then we got Drew Daniels and Matt Sada are interviewed backstage by Nick Sinair. Sada said they were proving they were the top team of four. Ron Daniels said they need to go to team of... Ejo Devi, you know, and Commander being in contention for the ROH World Tag Titles. Emi Sakura defeated Cal. The Outrunners were interviewed by Lexi Nair with Magnum Pounds that ass whoopings that just that just begun by Ford said they were going to prove they were a top team ROH. The boys defeated the Bollywood Boys. Yep. Tony Khan revealed a new ROH World Television Champion in a six way survival of the fittest. Match and RH final battle. The qualifiers to the match will take place up while well, well, within the upcoming weeks. The Renegades were in every backstage when they say they will be more successful successful against Leah Hirsch and Archer Ellering when it went tonight. Rick and Event wanted to speak to them. Athena and Billy Starks defeat Brooke Havoc and Johnny Robbie. Edith Page was interviewed by Lexi there. <laughs> But was inter- immediately interrupted by Mark Sterling and Tony Nice. Sterling said he would file a complaint to get the match thrown out, but Paige owned Sterling to file a complaint about what Nisa's win too. Nisa and Paige argued before Paige challenged Nisa to a rematch, but Nisa accepted. They go to Leah Hirsch and L- Rachel Elring versus the first to feed the Renegades, Charlotte, Robin, and Charlotte Renegades. After that match, Athena hosted another MIT meeting with Billy Starks, Lexi Nair, where Athena puts over Starks for an effort to a tag match. Athena says that they could not be in the team forever, saying they they go in, step up or get stomp out. Richard defeated Amy R. Mr. Ehijo defeating and Kamara defeated Christopher Daniels and Seidel. The main event. The Ring of Honor World Chat Kingston defeated Don Castle with Brent Tate. Brent Tate. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much the main event for ROH. You know, ROH. You know, like, yeah, ROH main event. So it was a great main event. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah. So, 
this is what it is. This is here. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, then. Since we're available, we're gonna do now. Let's let's you know let's go to the full gear notes, the media notes that we went before. Uh, uh, let me get to the boats. So apparently, anyone need to watch the media thing? I'm gonna show you the highlights of it. Yeah, let me look for the highlights. The highlights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, let's find the highlights. Um. No, oh, sorry. Look through my notes. Let me look through my notes. I'm looking at my notes. 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 All right, I found the notes in a media call, so let's talk about it. So basically, t- oh, Sarah Spa, stop. Ooh. From him, let's hear what he has to say. Tony Khan sounds like he's speaking very high sting when he contributed to AEW. Tony says nobody ever taught this thing into doing the same things. He does it during the matches, one entertainment. Tony Khan got asked by Stephanie and Chase about female voices in AEW. Tony cites Sarah Stock, Madison Rain as very important voices within the company. Sarah Stock also speaks Spanish, been a great benefit, which a number of lucha talent brought in. Then you go to another one where Tony Khan told Dominic Leandro that MJF had grown a great ambassador for AEW, which is something he expected for AEW was in LA in 2022. Then Tony Khan told Brent. Uh, then B. Pritchard, that he can't speak to why Dancer was pulled from Russell K, but he's on AEW next week. For his worth, it was, it was, he was said he was told it was due to clearance regarding Brian's flying due to pressure on his eye. Tony did re- did say recent pressure was a drive, appearance was a drive. Also, Tony Khan said that it was probably his in his place to spend Storm Circle for the home invasion. It would be something authorities to handle it, them to handle it in the ring. Then t- Tony Khan talks to Emmy Nimity. The time was Tony Khan jump into a character monitor everywhere. Everyone. He asked Tony Khan about how he decided the hype. Wait, announcements, hype, announcements. He wants to generate engagement. Was happy about science all in. As a lot of time, he wants to keep told. There will be more content of classic on the full gear. The sign will be a great addition to AEW. Ultimately, announced a creative buzz around the company. So, yeah. Then Tony tells Dave Melson that they're close to 900,000 range where you have a gear gate we can make for a push for a million with our strong wake up. Tony Khan says he put still in Wrestle Dream about a year in advance. Tony Khan says the AEW and it all about 200,000 buys. 2023 was the biggest pay per view interview. Tony Khan wants to know the Zero subscriber to give AEW all out thumbs in the middle. Tony Khan tells Iron Claw he believes there's a good opportunity to prove Iron Claw, which is interest M and JF. AEW goes in. It does a good timing. So yeah. That's pretty much that was my ROH results and and what the and it was a full gear media notes. So yeah. Now we go straight to SmackDown. Get the SmackDown. Yeah, SmackDown. All right. Here's SmackDown on the show. Okay, Knight finds a significant ally in the battle of the bloodline. Ellie Knight appears as a much needed friend as continuing to feel bloodline. She is out of the picture at the Crown Jewel. Ellie Knight found a willing ally in SmackDown's Cody Rhodes. Knight's revenge tour is underway. He is working his way in the title show against the Undertaker champion Roman Reigns. Now he's out to eliminate member of each member of the bloodline. Fourthly, now you found a willing participant in the latest career conquest. Okay. Twitter started finally finished on Friday night. Escobar descent from LWO. Took a more serious turn after the assault. The studio. 
Her second war games match was announced in Dash Critical Fighting Combined Night of Nicholas, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and Shotzi. Okay. So now before we start, let's let's start. Okay. So we go to the opening. Like let's start with the opening with the knight and the cavalry take on the bloodline, not the uh, somewhat. Let's go with the opening. So Paul Heyman just hastily celebrate how his soul's cola crushed Cena's throat, send him packing a crown jewel. Eventually Knight interrupts the bloodline. Knight reminds everyone he will be the undisputed universal championship, not for the bloodline's interference. Knight promised to eliminate each member of the group one by one until Brian's remain. Knight elected Usa at the first in line. And that was about the opening show about Knight and the Calvary taking on the bloodline, something like that. So before we go to the main event, let's talk about the rest of the show. Alright. Dash Critical of Mr. Welcome Oscar to the fold. Loosely tease Bailey's potential exit. They brawl with Flair. Flair shot to head a war game match between two sides. Tree Poppets defeated Brawling Brutes pretty deadly by pinfall to earn an undisputed tag team town shot like a jumping judgment day next week week. Um Dragon Lee to be Axiom at the hitting Operation Dragon. Santa Escobar defended his assault on Mysterio, got slapped by Vega, attacked Joaquin Wild, and Cruz del Toro was run off by Carlito. Grayson Waller defeated Cameron Grind by pitiful with help from Austin Theory. Ballet, ba- Flair, Shotzi, Barry recruit Barry Star for their battle with Dance Control War Games, but Dance Control assaulted each candidate. Lynch arrived via your odds against Dance Control ahead of War Games. So let's go to the main event. Knight defeated Russo by pinfall and hitting the BTF. Heyman has to call and meet ejected for inside rolling and gradually forcing WWE. Knight got off a hot start to start controlling Gurney's force of the action. The match ended on Knight reversed Russo fan offense to a slick BTF counter. So the call hit Knight with a small spike post match and bloodline pair to put Knight through a dozen table. Ruth made an unexpected appearance and say night, say the bloodline running backstage. Send the blood, blood bloodline running backstage. Running, bloodline running, I'm sorry. Backstage, SmackDown, General Magic, all this for Cody Will, he would need to leave the arena. So, so basically now, so SmackDown features simple with a fact of all loves the crowd jewel. Knight is uncertainly mad. Parents are pick off members of the bloodline. A root area a rematch against Reigns is a good sign that Knight continues to be featured. Now it's like his big setback. It's like Ray has well finishing move been corrected. Heyman also did a great job putting over his close to big win against Cena. Rose surprise save and assuming create build on it. So yeah, that was SmackDown review. Now let's go straight to Collision. This was yesterday's Collision special episode. Of collision on Friday. It was live. So let's go with it. Why are we gonna do a Collision review? I'm gonna tell you this. So due to this week's full gear pay review, this this like yesterday happened yesterday. We're gonna just. So that's why AEW had to bump back Collision back to Friday to give us a way fr- hour combined with Rampage. So we heard from several people who will be competing on full gear. We got Jay White and JF. There was some plenty of show with all the matches. So. Let's take a look at what happened during Friday's Suicide Night of AEW. Then at the Dynamite and Rampage, we will review full gear pay-per-view. Let's start with Collision. Let's start with out. Miro vs. Daniel Garcia. This special three-hour show kicked off with Tony Shabbat and welcoming Cage, Nick Wayne, and Clutch Storms were ready for an interview. Um, Cage gave a great promo hype. His trailer match of full gear title match we'll have later in the night during the Rampage portion of the show that the segment ended without a rush you had a quick interview backstage with big bill ricky stark for miro made his way to the ring for the first match with danny garcia so the dance machine got a nice rash when he came out looked like he was focused more on opponents hands was once so for god's sake and champion overpowered red death dominating a few few minutes at ease mm-hmm. garcia kind of gets some offense but he was stopping his track each time he gets a little momentum so a lot of AEW's matches are booked to give a critical offense of competitors, but this spot was set up in a much better way. Miro was dominant, had upper hand for more time while Garcia played underdog on occasional bursts of offense. So this might not be anyone's match of the week, but it was a great set Paul brought probably book up powerhouse against a smaller competitor without being convinced. They give a crowd just enough hope that so Garcia might get a submission victory with sharpshoot before Miro escape. Level the one to carry the setup of his version of the camel clutch to get the win. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, thankfully Daddy Magic showed up a very little impact on the outcome. Miro defeated Garcia. So one thing, let's say this. Um, have you ever noticed Kafira Kaya form are more beloved than kind of Valk vehicles? So yeah, uh-huh. So another thing, Christian made Tony Cold came back home mad to hold the mic for him was hilarious. That was hilarious. Uh one more thing, like Flair mentioned you can hear some woos and boos. Like when you mention Flair, you'll hear some woos and you'll you hear boos. Or right, we got the Kings of Black Throne versus the boys. Pretty competing in a fatal four line match. Yesterday says yesterday. Black Eye Black, Brody King had a warm up match against Dalton Castle Sidekicks, the boys. Match started against Tony with a red hair. Mm-hmm. Really took a head of spending all the three seconds. He got a twig. Yeah. King is strong out some offense. Oh, he's an opponent. Oh, yeah. It was a glorified squash man. King of Black won a couple of minutes. It was it's entertaining, stupid. Killer content. Hey, no for moments. Okay, King's no so strikes. Barking as a part such an intimidating night. Sight, I mean. Jay Hart kissed out of Sky Blue on a video package to hype TBS title match of Old Gear. Uh, uh, okay, Tempurana versus Patazera. Mino versus Brian K versus Commander. So Trent, Penta, Brian K, Commander, competed in a fatal four match to see one of them. Tasha and the TNT were title later on the rampage. In the beginning, you saw a lot of trash talk. Four men for action start, but once they got going, the coaches always had a few flying moves making it action. There's a amount of match, many cards, and cards. This one's about to take too long. This but the moment, say pie, let's watch one for yourself, and you'll see a lie. Everyone playing the brain for the make this fun and the generic fail full way. Beretta and the game the win by hitting strong zero on commander for the pin. So, yeah, so yeah, this was. <laughs> Notable moments also notable moments. We at K to brace a nerdier character does not get talked about enough. We got Beretta Sucker and Penta to close on a great spot. Cage suplexy come out of the ring on the Beretta Penta little bonker spot with great and the same array. Cage had a nice looking 619 during the picture for the segment. So we go straight to Warlow with some fortune unfortunate soul. Then Dark Soul versus Bush. Warlow marched his way to the ring, immediately hit a power arm bomb with some fortunate jobber. The war daddy wasn't done, climbed to the top rope, hit a small time bomb before hitting another power bomb. Ruff called the match, his opponent could not continue. Warlow defeated local talent by referee Spoppage. That's how I wish back for a singles ahead of the four way ladder match. Hey, now alone, sorry, you know, this ain't starting to be a little with all near ring. This is a physical match. Power is just well known for his brawling. He is technical rust, so he and Hard Hitting Bush were able to enter a competitive contest. So, near miss and big event and others, so they try to control us all the time. Pretty, but it was a fact that these men have been easy out of these things. were not holding back. This is definitely about Ben and Wolf, and I think the ending there, and it feels like the stars have built the rest of the fire floor match. So, it turns a huge ball. And the match was good, but ending really hurt overall call. The huge ball could have easily taken after the real clean finish. Again, oh, let's try again. Hardwood rush, Trey strikes. We could see, but both attempting on the sit side. They had red chest at the low while. Bush fake out came to his front. Weird not to see Cashmore on high wall. Hardwood. Real Utah. Now we go to Real Utah versus Buddy Matthews. Real Utah, Buddy Matthews. Match for a single match. One easily got the tag teams and clear the ringside. Matthews had a clear stock on the ramp, but you know, you just need to have ability and play field, so this would be like one sided battle. They ended up having a great match that showcased the individual skill sets. The best part was the ending part, part predicting that it would be the match up from start to finish. Matthews ended up getting the pin and wasn't done yet. He went for the cherry to the hat, one more day, and should show up and make the save. We got the mighty and turn Matthews to manage in full gear. So, Matthews defeated Yuda. Observation. So the house of black is over the show. Great to see the whole group getting so much beat detention recently. Matthews is a great performer. It feels like AEW has not come close to having his potential yet because they had a match with your candidate. If you think you put, were put in the right position, not having a member of the BCC or HB at Rain Sound's right call, we need another interference ending. We have the Outcast versus Yoshida and Chris Sandler, a, a, a collision main event. 
Y'all can have came up with a final match on Collision Partial Show, take on Chris Stanley and Kiyoshida. We saw a start to match on Shiva, but all announced Kyle was so being a potential suitor. Juggle Partial Show and the line support while wearing her solo shirt. She looked happy to see him, but strategy her almost cost her the match. Even though the match has some great action, there was a disconnect with Nito Chan. He was one of the facing the challenge of their full gear. Sandler and Wake Down Park would have closed on the ringside while Sheena and Fisher surrounded the ring of the win. The Clinch of course will show Ender and Jim giving a backstage interview with Siobhan. Sandler and Sheena defeated Ruby Solo and Saria. So, yeah. Sandler was the best solo, Saria at the same time with a nice display of power. So, of course, around that, it looked good. So, yeah. It looked good. So, yeah. So, now we go straight to Rampage now. Christian Cage versus Trent Beretta for the TNT Champion. Rampage opened the show with Jericho made entrance to join the Tom Machine table before Beretta Cage came out for the TNT belt. Bot. About, okay. Cage talked to a trash, tried a big time Beretta, but was intimidating. Both these guys are veterans with some abilities, but with Cage being more decorated champion than two, he would make sure to let Beretta know who the biggest star was. Due to Cage being a few of stay out a couple in the moment, the conclusion of the bout would feel too predictable. Made too hard by any false finishes, but did this to make that match entertaining. Cage kicked out of Storm Zero. The same move Beretta used to win his opportunity in the show. When he regains composure, he began to focus on Beretta's neck, hitting the kill switch for the win. Christian Cage defeated Trent Beretta. Cage did a lot of heel hill things between moves again. He's he the kind of talent rookie he's just study. He knows how to work the crowd perfectly. Beretta has a really smooth BBT. Cage pulled a little just over the camera around his shoulder with a funny moment. Toy Service, I mean, Sonic Rip. Toy Story trying to get any Sonic Rip in that matter, but Veteran Rip it up. So I started throwing Sam around the ring. Thomas was all the word down by a hand and put Sam around the ring. There are the half hour on the get keep attacking the side on the floor. So I can move the mayor or the end you see. Okay. Mm-hmm. And storm. That's it. That's right. I'm going to be kicking out of a tiger bomb. Threw the back right at her. Started to take up the wind. Turn storm. Storm. The Emmy Sakura. So moments, Storm has Storm has some new gear for the match goes well with her character. The crossfire saga hit the knock Storm on April look great. Okay, Roderick Strong versus Action Andrade. Roderick Strong came out of the TV and Beth Bennett and Kiwi in the match against Action Andrade. Her attack A as soon as he got in the ring, but high first started coming to him down two count. A bit quick battle when they turn to a more competitive fan. That did is not being the most deadly match about the main event. Probably not going to be on the show, but they did a good job keeping the crowd vested. There's a scary moment when one strong lady on his neck falls splash fly. Rye fans should get the win. Jay White got an interview, close the show, close the show, when NJ attacked him out of nowhere, attempt to get back to Chippewa B. They end up in the ring where NJ ended up getting beaten down by the gun and stretch blade. Swojo made the same, but was able, unable to help MJ claim the belt. Like right, Joe and Jay White won to defend the Irish tag titles at full gear. Roger Strong defeated Andre Andrade. It's a notable thing. Hearing, hearing Jericho talk about losing Andrade is kind of funny. McGinnis has become the enemy of heel commentary. He never hesitated to bear a baby face or put over heel no matter what's happening. Jay and Bennett should have more matches. King knows the tag team great tag team, but they feel a waste in his ankle. Andrade shows some great power. He picked up Brian up Math Suplex. If Strong had to hurt his neck or an angle, Andrade would never lose it down. So, yeah. Nine word, AW had three hours of program on television this week. It's not that they're used to, but a company managed to fill the time effectively. Before it being the go home show for Bill Gear, Matt Angel, AEW had to juggle some hyping pay review while also putting on matches that would entertain the playing crowd. Not only did a handful of bouts, but most of the stars were dressed were done so in a satisfying way. So, yeah, there are certainly weak moments for the segments. Overall, it's an entertaining way to spend a Friday night heading into a pay per view weekend. So yeah, mm-hmm. that that was Rampage Collision and SmackDown review. Full Gear re- pay per review is coming up now. Uh, okay, now for a Full Gear review. As I pause, the last thing on our sh- our, our podcast for this week. Yeah, this is the first time we're doing a, a Full Gear review. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay. AEW stages preliminary pay per view of 2023 Saturday night with full gear. Headlined by the World Chat NGF, defending against Switchblade Jay White. 
the blockbuster main event capped up the show saw a major title promotion stake, the culmination of a summer promotion feud, and a re- reveal of a new signing. So, let's get to it. Who signed the dotted line? Which champions changed hands? Was any able to overcome all the adversity? Recent adversity had a counter by retaining title. Let's get to the full gear recap. Alright, the announcement is shown. N- NJ vs. Jay White World Championship match. The international champion Arch Castle vs. John Moxley. The AB Tag Team Ladder match. FTR vs. Left Flag Honoria Benoz vs. King of Black Throne vs. Big Bill and Ricky Starks. The AEW Women's World Championship, Hikaru Shiro vs. Thomas Toy Storm. TBS Champion, Chris Dammer vs. Sky Blue vs. Jill Hart. Texas Texas after the match, Han Page vs. Drew Strickland. Mega Jerry vs. Young Box. Golden Darian Stane vs. Christian Gage vs. Nick Wayne. And Ring of Honor World Champion Eddie King vs. Jay Lethal, Zero Hour. Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion MGM vs. Mojo vs. The Gun, Zero Hour. Casanoli vs. Buddy Murphy, Zero Hour. So let's start with Zero Hour. The Ring of Honor World Championship match, A King vs. Jay Lethal. Okay, A Kingston defend the Ring of Honor World Champion against Jay Lethal to kick up the sh- evening Zero Hour preview a show. With Stokely halfway watching from the commentary position, Jack Jerry sounds singer. Karen Jarrett and Sean Jarrett made the resume of things that were precautions. They still control the pace and dominate the action, but the gritty, gritty Kingston never gave up, fight his way back into the bow. Just as looked at uh, the trademark guitar would play in fact to close the most of the contest, Ortiz appeared blasted. Do it with it. This is stretch about Kingston Lock. Lethal with Bathfist scored a t- successful tile defense. It was a good night match that to show too much attention. Pay attention to the ringside. Half with intensity, then dead against the champion commentary. Ortiz with Naeem with Fran following the clash. Kingston has earned better than to have an ROH foul rain race and open in the magic kickoff show. But I have empty arenas. But I digress. Kingston feed Lethal retain. What I can do, and I can do the halfway of Ring of Honor directors and said when my push was pressed by Toshi Shabbat allowing interference with lethal teammates at ringside. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Ortiz appeared. Yeah, he grabbed the hold of the guitar. It was a reunite with Kingston. Then Con- Kingston commented, like Mike, only the fun experience. So, regardless of the win, so this is after his win. So, we got Kyle Casanoli versus Buddy Matthews. If you take two wrestlers, the Calvary House Plug. BCC, put them in the ring, no frills outside. First, your setup will show with Dan fighting in action, reaction. Near men disappointed Saturday night. They were a good, hard hitting match. I saw both men bruised, bolted, but got some more ultimate win with the sharpshooter. The match did no further, and ill will between BCC and House of Black did prove for my fans a preview of things to come later on the main show where we're in the action. The quality win for the cost of not even matters to tend to victory a lot more. So for a repeat, okay, the match did nothing further any well between the BCC and House of Black, but it improved the fans of Premier Days come later on the main show with great ring action. The quality win for Casanoli, even in the Matthews, can use the win more. Casanoli defeated Matthews. We had Mommy Chance, that we won, and they got Matthews in the ring. So, yeah, that was a Mammy Chance. We saw Matthews as Jackhammer, so we thought the mystery sign was going to be Goldberg, but it's not. The the mythical the Matthews got some of those sparse cuts, scrapes, and right to hit shoulder to left shoulder. Next, um, there we go about the World Tag Team Championships: NJ vs. Mojo and NJ vs. The Guns. AEW World Champion NJ won every do the team. Mojo Jones found the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship against the Guns Saturday night. His apparent news crazy throughout the match. He not want to tag Joe, even turn his back at one point, but once we realized he would need support to if he wanted to retain the titles. Joe provided us that, rolling the match, he took the fight to challenge him, and also Nicole Moore got the best of it, and Nicole made a surprise appearance, and Shratcha and allowed Joe to score the win with a good kill of clutch. After the match, the heel beat down Jam, knee with a chair, created a down possibility to defend the AF championship and get switchblade. Jay White late in the night, pretty much. Cliffhanger conclusion of Zero Hour Show. A solid match, star, st- strong storytelling, a great angle to help make the best part of the kickoff show. So, yeah, Engine is going to go defeat the guns to retain the titles. So, yeah. So, basically, right, so Engine wore a purple yellow rope ring, 365 wrote about like this 365 day. It's not until tomorrow, but it happened today, but it is what it is. 
We have I don't need your help to oh, no, and huh, all that stuff. So close on the parents drew a monster pop which just squash any concerns he was uh losing my man popularity my man due to his injury. Then we got Christian Gate, Nick Wayne, or sorry versus Darby Allen staying kind of hopefully. Things finally managed to stay at Cosmo kicked off full gear, so I'm partnering with Darby Allen, Ray Ross and Coleman defeating Team Two Champion Christian Cage and select a trio section. The man feeds our jaw dropping up from Allen, both category of the hope of fan electric competitors. Man, a great match, not my stretch major. We knew last night that we really got late. It was a fun opener for energy. But it's Harry Kitchen led his teammate fighting battles. Battle for him is also not a question for whether teams to team the two sides will continue. And Copeland now is thing to be a cage for short way. So there's top moments, like weights, whatever. A children's court saying the hill team ring from special cage for kids. Should not have lost anyone in the ring. Ring ring favorite time. Tell her Aaron. There's no on a rope. Come down. Can't watch it on side. There's a little strong. And there's a man one time. It's all days of the pro boy. We're beating me as he suffered a loss. Let's alright, let's go to the opening. Okay then, it starts with the AEW International Champion, Arch Cassidy versus John Moxley. AEW International Champion, Cassidy beat Moxley is definitely an A-winner point in all five-year history of the company. Retain his talent, leaving no doubt to so who's a better man. First to squeeze absorb everything Moxley threw at him, but he's a challenger, locked him for six arm punches, pity and ball and bridge break. Um, the public evolution to the story that got on for months, and definitely moment in career with Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Moxley does not lose like this. He'll really be on the losing side of any match. Definitely not definite. Reason more. It's more memorable. All the sign of respect for the fall of world check. For Cassidy, willing to put over and extend. A big month for Cassidy. A strong match with some great storytelling. A great rat head out of Cairo that may help make this big win. The match on the show. Cassidy pinned Moxley to retain the title. Shabbat revealed the pre match promo segment that injured his injury. Will he unable to defend the AEW World Champion tonight? Anakul interrupted, interrupted and called to reduce his place. Despite being injured, had an undergo surgery recently, the booking made no sense. Where what the angle AEW is planning for the main event segment, a major miss in my book. Cass and Moss on paper should not have an angry catch me they do. Oh look, Moss is bleeding. At least it makes sense with the content the story. He busted Cassie open in September at All Out. And fresh and school fired up return to favorite year. Where's the term knuckle pad? Bryce Banker could be over here. Definitely not coming. Oh, where is Rep? So I need to decide pro wrestling ring. So yeah, we go straight to AEW Women's World Championship match. Here is here versus Tyler. Time is starting to storm. Tyler started to regain the AEW Women's World Champ to be here last year. I should get the Shannon for the match. I never really loved the problems of talent. Rob. It was a case of fear and fear for Tyler Butler and Luther. Chief of Challenger. The finish came when he stopped the train in the back of the tights. Liberty. Ready hip and attack the quarter. Despite the question of quality of the match, there's no doubt what it meant for the character Storm's career. It was the Horatio Tyler Story and one appearance of Maria May, inclusion of about playing the seeds of Nation and Fan and play it out of coming months. Given our characterizations that she has been through since RAEW is rewarding to, to see the start of sale, create something a whole different and anything else in the company, get it over to the point that the championship victory could not be denied. Starting to finish here to retain the, t- to win the title. So, yeah. Starting to shoe a referee on Larry Carter for this another and Rock Sheeta with two cap. Luda shop Sheeta for Nina Kenderson. A story in the pay for form a little few shots in the body. So the thing is sticking out on the back of her britches. So the test pointed out that. So we see Maria May join Storm in the ring for a post match celebration, bringing her flowers. So there's more to this. The latter match for the AW World, AW, World, AW World Tag Team Champions. Starks and Big Bill defeated AEW, defended their title against MTR, Dax Hardware, Crash Wheeler, House of Blacks, Malachi Black, Rudy King, Thousand Oak Rush, and dressed on a four way ladder match. Some people enjoy the Fast and Fierce franchise, allowing not just a pure job happy action, and eye catching car crashes. This was the equivalent of the film series. No little to no story, the right just moves, high spots, big bump, that climb for Starks, with the Rock Wheeler, one of the belts. Knock it to the mat and let him absolutely secure the successful title defense. The comparison of the Fast and Fear tries 
telling you insult. It's extremely successful. I have a huge fan base. I don't mean for everyone though. Was there? Everyone involved works really hard. When there's no holding together, it's more of the same. Last time you see across promotions, if it's the right team went over there. Went over. <laughs> as great as FTR is, pressure LFI House of Black and Big Chance Starks and Big Bill Silva it feels like a team that's more to accomplish. So yeah, Starks Big Bill defeat FI FTR and the House of Black to retain. Carbon team double down no reason to start their bone to the ladder master bunch of being a higher ladder like great place in the first place. We see Star still in spotlight where he goes. So yeah. Some of the ladder bombs somewhere are breaking and limp. Gangs over gonzo bombs and dress called the ladder. I did not get ringside. Ringside. The TBS championship match Chris Stanler versus Sky Blue versus Julia Hart. The house that always wins Saturday night. Julia Hart held up her in the deal, bring Golden House of Black defeated Sky and Blue Stanley in a three way match with the TBS champion. The match better than expected, say it based on some solid timing. We will include a real club of spots and saw Heart Blue put inside differences more than once. Stanley, the champion, continued to fight one point. A blurry blue with Saturday Night Fever and a little Heart at liver level. Stanley pinned your rival, won her first title. Like Hart, like Star, a few matches earlier has been considered a long time building momentum for us. I've shown some improvement during the mission push. She had her efforts to repay in the form of my talent trim. Yeah, but there's an argument made that Blue should should not even the pin again. The fact she's missing the character transformation of the finish protected Stamler and likely challenging for Hart in a rematch scenario. So, yeah, Hart's a new champ. Blue had a new theme song. A new look, a transition from the generic bay face to a darker version of herself. So it was brought about by an attack by Hart. Hart only won the title of Musa, but broke up a pin. The finish was really, uh, the finish was really well executed with great timing. You got the AW latest sign, Texas Death Match. And a pinch with Stuart Strickland. So it was announced that Will Ospreay's All Elite, Errol Assassin, revealed that the latest signing to AEW would they understand he would not come in, in until he finished up New Japan Wrestling. He did try to find a defined top opponent, successfully for Wembley Center next August. So it's a big dish to Ross that gives the company a legitimate main event where it lives up. The hype only touched by AEW's own doing and the real question. So yeah. So Will Ospreay's All Elite. Uh, uh-huh. Moments later, Hangman Page was struck with some of the personal rivalry. Oh, that was a little bang, my mistake. Alright. Still, that 10th personal rivalry attempted death match. But soon, most violent, grisly, easily graphic match in the Paris company history. So, yeah. It's a fifth story that Page was meant for looking to punish Strickland, Baden, and home with his family. The crowd quit every mind the focus, cameras focus on the twist and mask, faces of competitor of their competitors. Wrath of every spot, Chad is also he was not. Adrenaline filled earth burst of energy, Brian Cage and fear paid for it. Page finally got the measure of revenge on Tanana by driving into a table. It was strictly used of cinder block steel chain, ultimately earned him the power spot victory. The match, though, it was a limited rate hardcore match with Mr. A Glit Plus. Because of my use of it, that was not early on the night, and hindsight was only unnecessary and needlessly cringeworthy. The same story could have been told without crossing the line. Tate says this over the minutes flirting friend. On a positive note, Strickland's a main man now. Fans were already totally behind him there, even though it's part of the victory. This was his Austin at WrestleMania 13 moment, and he would pass for fighting colors. He's a future world champion with the company. Strickland to be a page. There will be a fine line between hardcore wrestling and garbage wrestling. And there are something too many senses is coming stepping right over it. And it's to the point it's not being entertained. Early on was the match of Stanford and Stanford Blood Law for Strickland to use the point Michael. So this is completely unnecessary if you ever said Corey the late Tracy Smothers, he's not wrong. So having Kate done on directly back to the finish, protected page of being viewed as an outright loser for a second show in a row. That makes sense in the long term. So the Golden Jets versus the Young Bucks, Bucks, the Golden Jets, Jericho Mega, Battle of Young Bucks and Match set up by the land non frustration and friend partnership with the old show. There were more than hard feelings, bragging and right to state. There were a win for the Jets, but they will receive the the Bucks as a new tie off the title off the tag by opportunity. Though it appears that the Mega Mike will choose friendship with a championship operations. 
He proved Earl of Jericho, Rocket Mark Jackson with the trigger. The actor would testify for their color of what an angel by Megan the Mac by a wood. <laughs> Anthony Mac and Fear Carry Hobart the Infrared Hobart are heroes that lost a chance opportunity to see their friendship take another hit through a fit by destroying a ringside area and diffusing a side respect for Omega. From the logic standpoint, the Bucks could have used like the entire opportunity to employ a hell of a long enough to lose it. That's their fault. Also, it made some look silly. Beyond that, the match struggled to crawl back. See, back to the the best late with competitors, but due to the action, finished segments. The, the point of my friend is that it busted the heel, and then actually how to respond moving forward. My advice with Don Callis on the horizon. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do my job. The and stuff, you know. All right, all right. Jericho and Mega beat the box. I have takeaways for this. Cows during the commentary for the back site family was a Wednesday street fight. We might suggest this major storyline developing in this one. I think it's separation of the buzz. Cows cats cows. We have not the most. We have totally worst worry. Uh huh. On the mat. So yeah. One thing I will say, the cross struggle we are getting to the last match. Because this sword just not hitting home, my book. So, yeah, there goes over the edge of right arm. That's good. Now, I don't know what that means. So, yeah, it's what it is. Now, we go to the main event the AW World Championship match. Alan Cole or AJ, basically AJ versus Richard J. Black, Jitch Blade, J. White, and Jeff Digger, she came back. Due to the injury, NGF became able to compete in the event, defending the AW World Title Champions against Jay White to the best man in the stuff that came in action. Injured, and recently done to go start an ankle, book of the year's number here. NGF drove right to the ring, all the social sea balls, and Mick Bruce with the injury, and hit the ring to defend his title. While she the match not limited to the efforts of men, both NGF White were taught by consistency throughout that man one of the black lesson. History, the our story was based around my Gillette that was all injured in the community. Not only the high spot XP, there was a referee bump, the sense of team weight, some men bugging the man to say things like they did not see a crowd. After that, White looked like the biggest loser of the planet that failed to be a one legged champion. He was horrible best friend race that you ever made of it and a double mess. On the event, me and me and all the booking, say we aim at an injury angle to air the night because all the prey and mess of which it ultimately becomes. Your day of a great commercial wrestler after this absolutely living me on the other fucking master set to stay on our fans? No! What he does need to avoid the same book. To avoid those booking tropes, to avoid the booking tropes, and turn our fans against the Zen Bay faces of WWE over the years, more importantly, quality reveals the work with. Why is no, why no longer most likely you can fail to overcome a champ and compete on one leg for the most of the match so by using a championship belt as advantage? Had a chance to use it to the same dynamite or diamond ring? It was a horrendous fucking whiteness necessary for close storyline show. Strong storyline, logical booking decision, not call into the mix. First place that consists of selling my student in the game, usually way better and stuff like that. So I'm gonna pause and note the crowd was hot, so there's too too much of a booking, though eventually to turn on them. NJ had to be Jay White to retain. So yeah, again, lack of logic strong the booking of the few rather close to show have been mind blowing. Cold president size Hegel like a dark cloud, in my opinion. Why did NJ jump when he has a broken link? I don't get it. My thoughts for full gear. Full gear had a real time promotion, middle portion, great work for the stars in a women's division. Saw a lot of men despite the gross start the portion. A Texas death match and a strong strength on a star. Over your trails match if you have plenty of current future Hall of Famers but never reach quality. Eight of presenters are synonymous with the last two matches here. So we on the grave that ultimately drag overall quality down. And here we made a focal point like call. But it was anyway, is there a better way to mess they to do the Sunday into Sunday? Because to see when a career began to show itself more than one point in history. But on the rest of the most that that word was short things up for things nights like this. So with a full gear bash show, not even means and then one of them the president of the hard, yes. Good job, but a great one. Another conclusion. Yeah. So full gear had a 
great one without a conclusion. So yeah, that was my cool gear review. So this was a Gus Ali podcast. So I'll see y'all next Sunday as usual. Goodbye.